Hello everybody and welcome to episode 9 of our tile map tutorial series. In episode 8 we did the procedural generation with terrains and this was in version of Godot 4.2.2 and in 4.3 there has been some changes to the tile map and if we open this project in 4.3 you'll see that there is a warning here that the tile map is deprecated. Do not worry about this change. It's honestly very small. Once you understand what changes, you know, you realize that it's really not that big. And actually, I have a very large project that used tile maps and this new method of doing tile map makes things a lot easier. Alrighty, so if we look at the tile map, when we click on the tile set, Remember, we get all these properties with the physics layer, the terrain sets, navigation layers, custom data layers, rendering resource, la di da di da When we minimize that, there are other properties on the tile map, and that is the layers. So, basically, the difference is now each individual layer is its own node, and that is the tile map layer node. So, if we type here tile map, you'll see that there is the tile map layer. And there's a very easy way of converting your tile map to individual tile layers. You click on your tile map, you come to the tile map tab, and you come here and you put extract tile map layers as individual tile map nodes. And when you do that, you see each layer that was here in the tile map is now its own individual tile map layer node. So we have five tile map layer nodes. Howdy y'all, um, Editor Jackie, I just wanted to emphasize a point here. So when we create the new tile map layers, literally the tile set, all of the information in here stays the same. As you can see, like when you extract the layers, the layers go away, but um, everything else is the same. And as we'll see further on in this tutorial, the only difference with the functions and everything is that you no longer are going to have to include what layer you're talking about because in the tile map you have a bunch of layers and when you do actions to them like setting cells you need to say i'm setting the cell on this layer and you don't need to do that anymore and now that we've extracted the individual tile layers the functions are basically the same you just don't need to put the layer number but we'll see that further on in the episode thank you also so yeah you could convert the tile maps using this extract tile layers but that doesn't actually show you what is happening so if you want to do this process manually it's actually pretty easy you just need to create tile layers so we have let's count how many layers we have on the tile map we have one the water two three four five so we have five so i'm just gonna duplicate this till we have five water and now we just need to make sure that we have the same properties on the layers. So the most important ones that we've changed, if we look at this, you, you could see which properties we've changed. Basically just Z index because it has this revert arrow. And also on the cliff, we have Y sort. And on the environment, we have Y sort. But everything else is on negative one Z index. And yeah, so let's do that uh water z index ground layer because remember the things on the floor have negative one z index okay on the cliff we're going to put y sort and on the environment we are going to put y sort great and now all we got to do um if we go to the main tile map we have this tile set dot trez it's a resource we can copy it and we can just paste the resource into here and do that for each one. And that's literally all you got to do if you want to convert it manually. And you could choose either one um, and follow on in the tutorial. All right. Now let's go to the script and see what is broken. So first of all, there are some variables we no longer need. I'm going to group them together. So I'm going to put them here. We no longer are going to get this uh, tile map. We're going to get the individual layers just to separate this to do this put that there and the new variables we are going to add are going to be all of these tile map layer um, nodes so i'm going to click the first one hold down shift click the last one that'll have us select all of them drag it in hold down control drop it in and it'll give us this full signature 
And now just to see the, the damage in the script, I'm going to comment this out. And now we will see all of the errors from removing the tile map node and the layer numbers. So let us compare the differences now with these functions we're using. So we're only using two unique functions. It's set cells when we're setting individual tiles, and then there's set cells terrain connect when we're setting the terrains. So if we come here into the documentation of the tile map, let's compare the differences in the function. So here is set cell. I am going to screenshot it and then we're going to go into the tile map layer node and let's look at the set cell function there. If we compare these two functions, there's just one difference and that difference is there is no longer a layer um, property because the layer is now its own individual tile map. So that is literally the only difference. We're still getting the chords, we're still getting the source ID, we're still getting the atlas coordinates and you could use also the alternative tile. With that in mind, we no longer need the, the different layer numbers. We, we don't need that. Um, but what I'm going to do, because this is a little misleading, I'm going to rename these as water tile map layer. And I'm going to add that extension to all of these so we clearly know what it is. Cool. All right. So let's come here. And let's look at this. So this is for the environment layer. Let's copy this variable name. And remember, we no longer need the layer number. This gives us the layer number. So we can just delete that. And instead of using one tile map, we're using the tile map layer for each layer. And that's it. That's all we got to do. We got to do that for each one. Here is again using the environment layer. So we delete the layer number. And instead of tile map, we put the tile map layer. And now for the ground two layer, ground two tile map layer, we delete the layer number and we change that. Last but not least for the set cell, we're going to do it for the water. So we delete the water layer and we put that there. All right. And the same thing goes, you can observe the documentation yourself. Um, but here when we're using set cell uh, terrain connect. If you observe the documentation in the tile map layer node, it is exactly the same as in the tile map, except we no longer need to give the layer number. So I'm going to delete the layer numbers for all of these. And then we're going to just change that out there. So here we need the sound sand layer, which is for, we called it ground one. Here we need the grass layer. Oh, yeah, that's good which is ground two tile map layer. And there we need the cliff layer. And that is all you need to do. And that is literally also the difference. The only difference is now we just don't need to put the layer in the function names. What I like to do with this system, um, we could delete this now, we can delete that. I still like to have all my tile map layers under one node. So we're going to change the type of this tile map and we're just going to put it as a node 2D. And that way we can easily minimize and expand and see all of our tile map nodes. And we're going to save it. And now let's see if our script works. Okay. Everything looks fine. Everything is working. And that's all you got to do to update to the latest version, Godot 4.3. So don't get too distraught or discouraged. Like I need to learn everything new. It's really not a big difference. So good luck guys. Hope you make some cool things with this. And we're going to continue on with the tile map series. No worries. Because I have a heating blanket and my warmest sweater. It's really cold right now. But I just really wanted to give a huge shout out to all the Patreons. You guys are really amazing. And if you want to learn more about Godot and game development, you should definitely consider subscribing. Or if you're the person who kind of likes having a course and everything laid out for them, then check out my Udemy course. It teaches Godot to beginners and absolutely no programming knowledge is required. Thanks again for watching and I hope to catch you next time. Bye!